e-bikeaholics. Today we are taking a look at the Ejo Epic SE folding e-bike. This has a 48 volt, 10.4 amp hour battery pack that is hidden inside the frame. It has a 500 watt nominally rated geared brushless rear hub motor. It peaks at about 700 watts, I believe is how they set the controller. It has a front suspension. I'm not a huge fan of suspension for commuting. Um, I feel like once you try to stand up and pedal, you just start to kind of lose your efficiency. But it's pretty stiff and it does help a little bit on bumpy roads if you're going to be commuting on a regular basis on dirt trails having the suspension is nice these are 20 inch wheels it comes with 20 by 1.75 kenda tires it says that they're puncture resistant but they're not i would definitely recommend upgrading these with some schwalbe marathon plus tires unfortunately they don't make the marathon plus tour tires in a 20 inch so i like those a little bit better because they have a tread on them so they're good for gravel and road but the marathon plus are great great tires uh, very puncture resistant i would definitely recommend upgrading to those I really like the saddle. This comes with the Sun Tour. I'm sorry, not Sun Tour. This comes with the Sally Royale HZ, which is designed for e bikes. Has this nice little handle back here for when you want to lift it around. The bike itself is pretty heavy, it's about 50 pounds, mostly due to the battery and the motor. So, in terms of kind of shimmying around on trains it's still heavy when you when you have to lift it but it's not terrible and really what drew me to, to try this bike was that I'm I recently got a new job and I'm commuting on the train about 10 miles so just wanted smaller wheels to be able to kind of maneuver around inside the train sometimes you have to roll out of the train to let passengers in and out if you're by the door. It includes a nice heavy duty kickstand, adjustable. It's got these folding pedals. So you squeeze it in and then fold. So that helps save some space there. It includes this nice rack. Tail light it has its own separate battery, a little push button right there turn it on and I believe the same with this one I believe they use AAA batteries this one might have a smaller battery but I think you just twist this front piece off and then there's a AAA or maybe two AAAs inside there it includes these fenders which are nice plastic fenders and adjustable but really one of the best features of this bike is disc brakes. They're pretty basic. Tektro. Let's see. Aries. It's economy class, just basic. But a nice big rotor. And you could definitely feel the stopping power on those. They are mechanical disc brakes. Which is actually a lot easier for maintenance and adjustability. It's just a lot easier than hydraulic and I think the stopping power feels just about the same. I don't feel a major difference between mechanical and hydraulic disc brakes. This is just a standard barrel charging plug on and off switch for the battery pack and a USB charging plug. I'm not a huge fan of having the on and off switch on the battery pack. It kind of confuses me. I, I emailed Ejo to see if they recommend turning the battery pack on and off all the time. I think it's mostly just important to make sure that you switch the battery pack off before charging. 
but you can probably leave it switched on. I'm not sure if it would drain too much if you leave it switched on when it's not in use, unless, you know, if you're leaving it sitting for a long time. It's a seven speed shifter. There's the Revo shift twist shifter. Pretty simple. I do like these Tektro brake levers. They've got this nice rubber grip right on where your fingers rest on it. And on this side, an integrated little bell. That's pretty cool. The display is very basic. Press and hold it. I think my biggest complaint is that it starts in zero, which gives you uh, no thumb throttle, no pedal assist. And then you have to increase it every time. For me, this is only a 500 watt motor, so I always go straight to five. I wish there was a way that I could program it. I emailed them, they haven't responded yet. It'd be nice to program it so that it could start in five, so I don't have to do that every time. Then obviously you have the thumb throttle, which um, will give you power when you're pedaling or, or at any point. If you're not pedaling, it doesn't matter. It's always ready to give you some power. I also wanted to point out the battery indicator. It's just five bars. It's basic. I prefer to be able to see the voltage this way. When you start getting some voltage sag on the battery, it gives you a better indication of how much you actually have left in the battery. And these basic, um, you know, five bar little LED lights don't really give you too much information. Obviously, the handlebar folds down right here. It's very easy. And then, the frame can fold right over. Sure you lift your kickstand first and there's a little bar at the bottom there to support it so you don't crunch your gears up and then they also have this magnet attached to the forks so it's actually a magnet that's on the rear and just a metal plate that's on the forks. Could be a little bit stronger. It's not the greatest magnet. If you're folding it a lot, you may want to add some sort of strap, a bungee cord, just to kind of hold it together, hold it in place. Obviously, you can pull the seat off at that point. In my experience so far, I've only been using this on the train for a few months now and well not even, I mean I've been train commuting for a few months but I just got this bike a few weeks ago and so far I haven't had to fold it at all. Um, it's, it's compact enough just having the small wheels to easily, you know, fit in and out of people and really, you know, it still takes up space. It doesn't it doesn't lose mass when it gets folded. It just it just changes changes the shape. So if you wanted to throw it in your trunk or in a boat or an RV, obviously if it's, you know, if it's the length that's the problem, then having a folder is nice. I think in my case, I probably won't be folding it very often. So I would most likely be just as better off just having a, a mini velo type of bike with smaller wheels. You know, even 24-inch uh, wheels, I think, on my custom build that I'm designing now, I'll probably wind up using 24-inch wheels. And then getting it unfolded. It's a lot easier with two hands, but if you do have to hold something, it is still possible to get it back together. You get your safety clip there. Make sure everything pops in place nice and tight. It feels like a pretty good quality headset and that they, they probably greased it nicely. It's, uh, it's got a nice stiff 
solid connection to it. All the components feel pretty solid. I don't have any complaints. As far as the geometry, it's a little long. The reach, uh, they have it listed on their website, I believe. I don't remember the exact reach, but I do feel like I'm leaning forward a little bit. And I also noticed that this stem, for some reason, doesn't go all the way down. And I think maybe they designed it that way to try to give a more upright seat position. It definitely gives you an upright seat position. So I think what I'll wind up doing is just cutting a few inches off the bottom of this so that it can go further down. And I do like the ergonomics of this handlebar, but maybe having a handlebar that has more of a back sweep to it, or maybe if I cut the, the handlebars in a little bit, then I won't notice the reach as much. But I am 5'7", and it's a little long. I, I wouldn't take this bike on longer rides. My commute is only, I spend a mile and a half to the train on the bike, and then from the train station to my office is another mile. So I'm really only doing about five miles a day, four or five miles a day of riding. I wouldn't want to take this bike for a long ride downtown, mostly because the 10.4 amp hour battery pack is not going to last that long. They, they give a recommended range of 30 miles, but I think realistically that's probably only if you're in like pedal assist level one, not using the throttle, and mostly using your legs. Uh, for 10.4 amp hours, I would say more realistically maybe closer to 20, 25 miles if you're gonna use pedal assist level four or five. The gearing is a Shimano MFTZ 507 and that's a seven speed. It starts with a 14 teeth at the lowest, at the smallest gear and then I think, I forget what the small one is. I have not changed gears. I'm not a huge fan of derailers as a Shimano Tourney. Um, it looks really low. I haven't, I haven't hit it on anything yet but I do want to remove this and replace it with a single speed just because I hate derailers. And this motor gives enough power in level five that you really don't need to go to any other gear. And when you hit top speed, it, you start ghost pedaling um, at about 20 miles per hour is when you start really pedaling hard just to keep up with the cadence of the motor. So I, I'll most likely try a single speed with a, either a 12 tooth cog or a 13 tooth, which would be one or two teeth smaller than, than this one. And I think that'll give maybe a couple miles per hour uh, on the top end for when I need to kind of get into traffic and, and try to keep up with the cars. But overall, this thing is really cool. Um, it was hard to find anything with a 48 volt setup and I think they have it, it it's listed that it has a speed limiter at 20 miles per hour but I feel the motor still helping and still assisting even when I'm up at around 23 or 24 miles per hour so I'm not sure if maybe they just deactivated that speed limiter another thing I really like about this kit is this cadence sensor is really nice flush right in there so you don't have to worry some of the some of the um, the DIY kits have like that round magnetic disc and it just kind of gets out of place and it wobbles a little bit and it could potentially slow you down if um, if it's not if the magnets aren't lined up but that's just a really nice like you know set in little cadence sensor there they do have a 52 tooth chainring in the front. That's smart to have a big one. That's why 52, and if you do 52 14, gives you, I think, a gain ratio of, I want to say like 5.4, and then a 52 
15 would give a 5.6. Or actually, I think it's 5.6, 5.8, and then a 52, 12 would give a 6.0 gain ratio, which is why I think with this power level, you'd get a nice level of assist with that gearing. These grips are pretty nice. They're like semi-ergonomic. They kind of pop out a little bit here, very rubbery, soft, but they're comfortable. I, I can't complain. They're not as comfortable as the Ergon GP1, so I'll probably swap those out. But overall, it's a really cool little bike. It's, it's bigger and heavier than it looks in videos and, and in pictures but it's still, with the compact wheels, it still makes it a lot more manageable to just squeeze it in and out of places if, if you're in an apartment or in and out of trains. The lights aren't the brightest. I don't think they'll do much during daytime, but when it's dark, they give you what you need. And I think it's really cool at this price point. I think it's on Amazon for $1,500 right now. The fact that it includes the fenders, the rear rack, the pedals, the kickstand. These are things that normally you won't get. And, you know, that's about the same price as getting just an e-bike kit on its own. Uh, and then to have the battery pack integrated into the frame, that's really cool. And it comes with a basic 48 volt charger, which does the job. Show you the battery pack. So the battery pack locks in right there and you just need the key to unlock it and it slides right out. The controller and some wiring is hidden back there. I am curious, I don't know the exact manufacturer of the battery. Well, this motor cable is smaller. It's definitely a smaller cable than the other one on my front hub motor kit, so I would not be able to plug and play with that and see if I could if I could reprogram or use a different controller with this motor. But I would imagine there has to be uh, some kind of option. It may not fit inside here necessarily, but there must be other controllers that you can uh, plug in to those connectors there and see if you can kind of hack the, the motor to get a little more power out of it. It most likely can handle more power. It would just need most likely a new controller. The settings are very basic. You really only get if you hold the plus and the minus. The ST1 is the wheel size. This is a 20 inch. That won't really make that big of a difference how you set that. ST2 is the maximum in kilometers per hour. That's the highest you can go is 40 kilometers per hour. ST3, I believe is just the, um, the backlight, how, how bright you want the backlight to be. ST4, you can just switch toggle between miles per hour or kilometers per hour. And that's it. So I would definitely want some more. And then you can have a trip meter, trip time, or your odometer with your total mileage. But I would definitely want some more um, programming options, like on some of the kits, how they allow you to adjust the output of the voltage. But overall, this thing is really cool. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's definitely, you definitely feel the power difference going from uh, having over a thousand watts. I'm very used to riding with over a thousand watts, but I figured if 
500 watt nominal, 700 watt peak. If I just max it out, it's still, you know, I, I usually only run uh, pedal assist three out of five on my 1000 watt setup. So I'm probably only running like, you know, six or 700 watts anyway for the, you know, most of the time that I ride that one. It's just nice to have the option of having the extra power so that I do miss. But you just keep in mind that this is a tool for commuting. This is not, you know, I, I wouldn't take this to go grocery shopping per se. It could probably handle it, but I don't think I'd want to do anything other than just riding this bike to and from work. And that's, that's what this is.